Always good to be refreshing because sometimes if you don't refresh, the things don't do what you need them to do because you know, hey, it's it's high. <laughs> I feel like the beginning of Spaceballs every time we start a new show because I just want to play with my action figures. Right? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> hello everyone. It's Friday and Lauren and I are obviously a little bit punchy this week. But we're back. Yay! Well, I'm back. You were back yes. last week with Tanya, which was awesome. Yes, I was back with Tanya. Oh, by the by, I did finish up that mini. So here is what our finished little... Modron, I think they're called Tridons, right? The ones that are shaped like a Tridrones, triangle, like, yeah. yeah. Tridrones. Yep. Uh, this little guy is all finished up, and I did text Tanya the information on how to finish it as well. <laughs> but yeah, I got this one finished up over the weekend because who knew that all those legs and arms, you would have loved this. We had so many mechanical elbows and knees, Lauren. It was <laughs> interesting. <laughs> all the mechanical armpits. All I the mechanical it. armpits. So yes, this one is all set and done. We do have the other one that's left from that kit that Lauren and I may jump into some other week. We shall see. But this week, we're going to be doing something fun. And this is something we've been wanting to do for a while. We're going to take inspiration from the Dahani Spelljammer skin and paint this mini to nod to this design. So yeah, we're going to have some fun with this. And if you're interested, this particular mini is actually from the Were Raven uh, set from WizKids. So it actually comes with two minis. You get the stooped over old man and then you get the were raven itself. But we're gonna be using just this mini for this particular project to create our little spell jammer, the honey skin right here. Um, and the fun thing is, is I just uh, let Latia know this morning that mine is going to be getting shipped off to her to enjoy and keep for her collection Aww. once I'm done because she, you know, she helped us inspire what we have seen here. So I want to send along what she's inspired with this money. But before awesome. we get into it, oh, I can't wait to get this her way. Before we get into it, Lauren, what's happening in the game? Because well, in general, that's a whole different question. <laughs> well, I just got back from a trip. Oh, you mean the game. Okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, I'm happy to be back. I did uh, feel bad that I missed a whole bunch of stuff that Tanya was doing last week because Fen is in the game. Yay. Our the wonderful Drow Damn Fear Fen. You have uh, one, two, three more days. Yeah, three three days and a little bit in order to unlock Fen. Uh, I believe also Talon and Rust are the two other champions that are available for midwinter. But yay, Fen! So yay. she's still available for a couple more days in the game. Definitely go check it out. We are also in the middle of season two. The, the Flare Hunters. We're deep in the middle of that season. If you have any questions about either unlocking Fen or the season or idle champions, you can definitely ask in chat. I'll do my best to answer what we can, uh, but also definitely come to our Discord and hang out there where you can get some really in-depth questions because there's a lot going on with seasons. Um, and on Wednesday, if you missed it, we did an update that gave you and every champion two more feet. That's right. Everybody's two feet taller. No, mm -hmm. everybody has two more feet that they can <laughs> equip to the champions. It gives you four feet. Now, if you haven't played since Wednesday, or if you've just started playing with some of those champions, uh, just like with the first two feats, you do need to unlock them the first time in order to get them. So you may notice that those are locked at first, but just play and level up your champion and you'll unlock them. And then you can have four feet, which is just fun to say. It is. It really is fun to say the feet. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, we've had some really cool things happening this week. Hopefully you're all enjoying the uh, Fen, the Fen. Hopefully you're enjoying Fen in the game. The that's Hey, listen, I think she would I appreciate being the Fen. The Fen. Um, so hopefully you're enjoying unlocking Fen and playing through all of that. And then again, you know, adding your new feats in. Yay! Uh, and we have uh, Martin is helping us out. So if you have the questions for Martin, whether it's about idol champions, mini painting, or just questions in general, you want to make sure it is in caps because then it's oh. easier to see. Question! Also, colon. Question colon. Also, um, Martin got everything set up and then has actually passed it along to Mars. Oh, so they they just did a handoff because M and M you know switch. What? Martin deserves a lunch. <laughs> yes, food is important. Yep, 
Yep. So we actually now have a Mars, but uh, same same thing. They're awesome. That and works. you can grab, uh, you can put your questions in chat about mini painting, about idol champions, about anything really. And we'll do our best to answer them in between painting. Da honey. Da honey. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to this one. And um, again, if you're looking for this mini, this is from WizKids D&D Knowles Marvelous Miniatures line, wave 18 or 19. Uh, one of those two waves. It should be in your local game store. If not in your local game store, you can go to dndmini.com. And WizKids did give us a code, um, and they've been very helpful about that one. I want to say it's, it's either Slave, no, no, Slay and Save mm -hmm. 10, Gen 10, um, or... Yep. Is it? Yep, that's save, the one. Slay save. and save Jan uh, for 10% off any of your orders. I'll go ahead and put it in Thank the you. chat here. Thank so you. It, and I'll, I'll go ahead and put it in a little backstage thing so that the bots have it too. Which I should have done it first. Yeah, no worries. They literally just sent it to us like, was it today? Was it yesterday? It was very yeah, recently. Was yesterday. Yeah. It was very recently. But they've gotten those codes for us again that you can use uh, to get a discount of 10% off your entire purchase, by the way. Not just the minis themselves, but, well, they're all minis. But you know what I mean. It's not just this particular mini. Whoops. It is the other minis that you might be adding into your cart. So that all being said, we will be using paints from the D&D Prismatic paint sets, both the basic and the intermediate. And grab, grab the set. Hold on. I'll show it off. Also, yeah, if you can do it because high, high cipher of tear and high herbal bohemian. Hello. Just... So we will be using ah. paints from both of those sets. Now keep in mind for this year, 2023, Lauren and I are going to be using paints from these two sets um, and having some fun with that and kind of taking it to the next level of using paints that come pre-mixed, but also having fun mixing those paints with other paints. But yes, that is going to be the plan for this one. And this is probably going to be a two episode mini because you know as as someone pointed out in the chat yeah, look at the details in these wings they are she fancy she f super fancy yeah she's super duper fancy so we're gonna get started um and there's gonna be a song that's stuck in your head now because we're gonna start first by painting it all black hey and can i make an assumption that we're grabbing mm. the black yes awesome. yes if you want to use black, absolutely. But then we're going to have some fun once we get black on and then do a couple other things of using colors like fairy dragon wings and black pudding and rust monster. Um, you're going to enjoy the names that you're going to be hearing as we paint through this mini because in this prismatic paint line, um, WizKids and Vallejo have had fun with the names of the paints as well. So mm -hmm. you did not hear me wrong if you hear me talking about a monster as a paint color. That's mm -hmm. literally what's happening. So you're going to want just a general all-purpose brush or a number one or something along those lines. And then we're just going to go ham and paint everything black. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I have I'm just testing whether I want to add some water to this. I was just, I am glad. Yeah. I am going to add a little bit of water. Remember you want to get the consistency of warm maple syrup because cold maple syrup is congealy. Um, and disgusting. <laughs> if your maple syrup's cold, that means you didn't have your waffles when they're warm. Mm-hmm. Yup. All right, there we go. Yeah, I added a tiny, tiny little bit yeah. of water. Just to uh, it. Yeah, and the reason why you want to sometimes thin out your paints if they're too thick is because then when you go in to apply the paint to the mini, the mini will be too thick and it'll start to collect in the lower recessed details. And because this paint is acrylic, acrylic is plastic, the plastic hardens, which then means it fills in those details. So that way you actually start removing the details from the miniature if the paint is too thick. So you don't want to slather it on. This is not sunscreen, folks. We don't need that on our minis. The other thing we're doing is we're going right in and painting this because the D&D Knowles Marvelous Miniatures line does come primed ahead of time. When we're doing things like the framework minis from WizKids, those are not primed ahead of time. Those we prime ourselves. So just a little FYI heads up. So I'm going to yeah. go in and I'm going to start painting. Meanwhile, start we already painting. got a whole bunch of questions that I'm excited. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Bellswin has a few. Um, when you seal your mini, do you also seal the stuff you add to the base like rocks and grass? That is an excellent question. I do because of the type of seal that I use. Remember, I use the Mod Podge Ultra which is a spray on varnish, which you can also then take off the top because it's a pump action bottle. It is not an aerosol bottle. 
So I will prime or not prime. I will seal the mini with my paintbrush and opening up the bottle and going right in for the liquid itself. And then what I will do for bases that have more details on them and things on them, I will then spray with the Mod Podge. And that helps, especially with details that are more fine grained things. Like if you use sand, if you have used um, things like dried moss, uh, it will help kind of keep everything in place for you. Awesome. Yeah. But I would not go and try and paint that on with a paintbrush for the finer detail things because then it might make things sort of stick together or clump together. Um, like if you've ever seen mascara where someone just puts too much mascara on, it turns into like looking like spider legs on someone's eyeball. It yeah. might do that to the details on your base, depending on the type of materials. So it's always better to spray lightly. Spray lightly. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Cypher of Tears in chat and mm. wanted to know, uh, is there an overlap in colors between the beginner and intermediate kits? Nope. That's the yeah, first thing I colors. looked at. The answer is no. Um, the two kits have different colors. There might be similar tones, but they are different colors themselves. And so the beginner starts you off well, and then the intermediate expands your palette, basically. And I'm trying to remember, uh, does the beginner actually have, like, black, red, it, the, some of the actual beginner, I shouldn't say beginner, some of the base colors, I should say. It has things like the, I'm looking at my list right now. It has things yeah. like washes. It has a starter metals. What's interesting is the black itself does not come in the beginner. It comes in the intermediate. Yeah, but you but do get black pudding too. in the beginner. You just get a more delicious black in the Yeah, it's the it's the black it's a dark it's a dark tone almost like black but it has a slight midnight hue to it. Ah. Yeah. Um and Bellswin is back and wants to know the metal part of one of my brushes keeps coming off the wood handle part. Is it okay mm -hmm. to cramp it on again with a pair of pliers? You can do that. You can also get E6000 and put a dab of that into the barrel. Because, I mean, actually, this paintbrush I need to do it with. <laughs> I've just gotten really good at holding them the right way so they don't pop off. Um, so what I'm going to do after the stream is I'm actually going to put E6000 inside there and then just smoosh the wood piece back in. And then you can clamp it if you want to. Um, the thing is, is if you keep clamping it, you're going to degrade the wood and the wood's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then eventually you won't be able to put the barrel back on. Um, hmm. I found the E6000. Or you could do super glue if you wanted to. Uh, one of those two. I know this is not the number that you were saying, but for whatever reason, as you were saying E6000, I now have in the heights 96,000 mm -hmm. going through my head. Funny. Which is a fun song, but not the number you were actually saying. No, so. but still, I mean, I think it's apparent we're already doing some bizarre association mentally today. So I'm here for the connect the dots. Like, how did you get from there to here? Conversations. I don't know, but it's a, it's a good song, so I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I have this in my head. Yeah. All right. I see. What what E6000, what is that? One moment, please. I'm here. This is E6000, okay? I like to get the smaller tubes because um, it's just, this can dry out, and if you use the smaller tubes, you tend to use it up before it dries out. Uh, but this is what it is. It's basically, it comes out like a very uh, jello -y like glue. Um, it's thicker, basically. It's not a thin liquid. And mm. you just put a little dab on and away you go. I would show you what it looks like. However, warning about this stuff, it does have a high fume rating on it. Uh, make sure you are in a ventilated area if you're going to be using this. Good to know. Open yeah. the window. Even Open if the it's window. disgusting outside. Yeah. Don't put it into the brush you're going to be using for the next hour. <laughs> 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 Not good. It's amazing how just a little bit of liquid like that can have such a strong mm -hmm. impact. It doesn't, does not take much. Yeah. Oh, it can definitely get you. Uh, just be careful when using E6000 with different type of materials. You always want to test patch on things that are kind of foam-like because it will eat away at the foam. Mm. It's basically like the gelatinous cube of crafting. <laughs> mm. Ubiquitous, but scary, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. Pretty much. Sorry, I'm trying to get the the little bits in between the oh, feathers on me, these wings, it. which is that's why uh, I made sure this was super liquidy. Like it's it's almost glaze like at the level that I've done it, because yeah. I want to make sure with how these wings have so much detail and how recessed they are that the black gets down into that area. 
I'm doing a lot of poking. It, there's so much poking happening right now. Poke, 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 poke. Yeah, I'd rather do thin coats of face. black. Yeah. In and around the face. Uh, and Bellswin also wants to know, and these are good questions uh, if mm -hmm. people are new to our show and new to mini painting, which, you know, it's the beginning of the year. We, yeah. we might have quite a few new people. Uh, they want to know what is the best way to store your minis when they are not on display? For instance, if you're running out of space on your shelf, which is very apt as I have uh, definitely run out of space on my display shelf and I've had to start storing minis in other places. That's pretty straightforward so it depends if you want to have it displayed with purpose of showing off then you can get yourself like a curio cabinet or like um enclosed bookshelves are definitely helpful uh if it's just a matter of storing them away and keeping them safe in between use tackle boxes or ornament storage boxes yeah i know a lot of folks uh tackle boxes or those um those plastic organizer boxes if especially mm -hmm. if they're smaller minis like this are super useful yeah for minis or dice. There you go. If you're like friend of the show, Goblin Katie, who has a lot right. of dice to store. Yeah, I mean, um, you'll see in craft stores, they will sell like bead boxes and things like that. Spoiler alert. They will mark those up by about $10 because they're cute and they're pretty and they're like sparkly when you get the same thing, which is essentially a tackle box for really cheap at places like Walmart. Um, and they do the same thing. They even have it so you can like move the spacers around to customize the width to the base and everything like that for the tackle boxes. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And the ornament boxes are really great if you have uh, larger minis to store. Which we've got a couple. We've done. We've done mm -hmm. a few. We've got a dragon and yeah. the tree ends. We've, we've definitely got yeah. a couple that could use a larger storage space. Exactly. Uh, question Colin wants to know, did a new retirement sale launch today? Was it today? I want to say let yes. Me, let me find out because um, a lot of those sales, they Depends. they launch and depend on what uh, platform, platform you're on and all kinds. Yeah. And all kinds of things, some of which are not things that we have any control over. So let me uh, let me find out for you. Um I've been living what, what, in April and May on the calendar, so I honestly can't answer that one. <laughs> in fact, I think Mars is already on top of it. Thank uh, you, Mars. Thank you, Mars. Uh, looks like the January retirement sale is about to go into week two. So, okay. uh, so yes, there should be some new stuff showing up in the store on sale. But was it PlayStation that's now done for that? I one of them went earlier. I want yeah, to say. yeah, I think it was PlayStation because usually PlayStation is late, but this time we were able to go reverse. early be <laughs> because because PlayStation sometimes just wants to be whatever they just want to do their their thing, and you know what? It's it's their platform; they can do their thing if they want. Exactly. Um, my my other suggestion, I know because it's just afternoon, a lot of that stuff uh, goes live. But definitely, you know, if you don't see the thing that you're expecting to be on sale immediately, give it a few minutes because yeah. some of that stuff can take a little, a minute or two to propagate. So um, if you're waiting for something that you know is going to be on sale to show up on sale and you don't see it immediately, give it five minutes. Yeah. Maybe restart your game just to make sure because, um, you know, sometimes it just takes an extra minute. So be patient, please, as we make sure that all of those prices are right. Mm -hmm. The price is right. Price is right. The price is right. That's bum, a show bum, I ba bum, bum, ba dum. Ever. Bum, wow. ba dum. Bum, bum. That's all I can bum, give you. Bum, bum, bum. Yep. See, Lauren can. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can just keep going, but I, I think we'll still get hit. Yeah. I think the. I think we're done. That's it. That's all you can get. Copyright gods will still be like, nope, nope, nope. And you know uh, what? Parker if I'm going to get a copy, who doth sing my theme song? <laughs> I'm going to get hit with a copyright strike. It is not going to be over a game show theme song. Wait, who's doing it now? This this is how long it's been since I've watched The Price Is Right. I grew up on Price Is Right when I was homesick. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's Sundays at my grandfather's house type of thing. Not Sunday. I know Jim Carrey was doing it for a while, but I was think it? even Jim Carrey has now moved. Wait, was on it Drew Carrey? Chat. Uh, sorry, Drew Carey. It's like, dang, Jim Carrey. Not not Jim Carrey, Drew Carey. One of the Carries. Uh, chat. Who, who is currently who's, who's, who's the Price is right, right person? 
It might still be Drew Carey. Uh, that's what Wicked One WTW is saying is that it's it's still them. Also, okay. hi, uh, TTRP Gifts. How you Hello. doing? I am almost. I'm like on the last little bit of the hand for this black, mm. and I'm almost out of black on my on my paper plate, and I don't want to go. I don't want to pour any more, so I'm just going to add a little more water to this, and I'm going to make yeah. it work. Make it work. I'm going to make it work because I don't want to have to pour out more. I'm very proud of the fact that I had almost exactly the amount of paint that I needed for this. Yeah, I was a little bit under and enough where I had to put more down. So now I'm just taking what's left and doing another little thin coat around the mini because I can. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to finish this hand and then go through and look for all of the spots I missed. because exactly. I'm sure That's kind of why I'm like, oh, I'll just do a second round of this because then I'll make sure it gets all the little nooks and crannies that I may have inadvertently hiccuped over. Yeah, that that part of this part of the painting where it's like, is it actually, did I miss a spot or is it just shiny? Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like Drew Carey is still doing Oh wow! The, the Price is Right, which, you know what? I mean, good for him. He, exactly. That, that's kind of a sweet gig and I respect yeah. him for hanging on and having fun with it. You know, one of the job requirements for that is must like hugs. If yeah. you think about it. Yep. Could you imagine having yep, that yep, job yep. and not liking hugs? Not just not liking hugs. You just have to like hanging out with all sorts of different people, right? Because mm -hmm. that is, and people who are not necessarily going to be at their best because it's Ooh, it can be stressful to types, suddenly, yeah. yeah, to suddenly be on camera and suddenly be under pressure. Like it is so easy when you are at home watching you know, people on the TV mm -hmm. do something and you're like, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just do that? And it's like, oh, right. well, once you're there and your brain locks up because stress, oh God, yeah, that's a whole different puddle of wax. Sorry, I'm trying to get in between a toe. No, that's cool. I'm just trying to think of what type of music puddle of wax is a band would play. <laughs> <laughs> grunge. Grunge. They're grunge. They're they're definitely good. Um, <laughs> Egg asks, are we priming with black now or is it a wash? Um, these Neither. are, yeah, these are pre, uh, these already have a primer on them. Mm -hmm. We're painting it as a base of black because we're doing the honey down there. And so it's just yes. going to make, make our lives a little easier by just, uh, I see a Dahani and I want to paint it black. Yeah, and it also it helps get the uh, darker tones into the recesses because this is an extremely detailed mini uh, with deep details, which I love is a mini painter. Which are awesome. But it also helps. What we're going to do is sort of a little bit of um, it's not quite shadow layer because I'm not going ham. Where we're going to do the different gradations of gray. Uh, we're basically going to start with black and then in some areas we're going to go back in with dead white and start highlighting those uh, higher details to bring them out and just create this stark contrast. It's almost like uh, zenithal except we're not using an airbrush from above and trying to create this direction of light. Um, so it's, it's sort of a hybrid blend of things, but it'll be great for bringing out these features and folds in the fabric and then just make it easier for us to go back in with glaze treatments um, and really mimic what we have going on here with Dahani. Mm -hmm. Adorable wee Dahani. And it's just good to get that, that awesome base color down mm -hmm. for our murder burb. Murder bird. I love the fact that Dahani is smaller than people realize. I relate. Eric Hooker in general. <laughs> like it's just because, you know, that she is she's so deadly that yes. everybody assumes. But yeah, she she's I think small. Latia said she doesn't doesn't crust over five foot. I'm trying to remember from her Idol Insights interview a couple weeks ago. Wasn't it like she's not even five foot tall? She's like four foot ten or something like that. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Which is a, which is awesome. Yeah. She is compact and ready. Mm-hmm. All right. Whoops. Sorry. Yep. yep. Murder burb. So cute. So cute and sh uh, shiny because we're going to be doing the, the spell jammer version of her outfit. Mm hmm. It's going to be fun. Do 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 do. Yep. I think Gosric is shorter. Um, yeah. I'd have to. I'd have to go look at their their character sheets to be sure. But yeah. I mean, uh, Eric Coker in general are not huge. Like, I think just because of the pictures that you see in a bunch of the books, there's the assumption that like eagles and mm -hmm. giant, but they're, they're like on average 5'10", 
five feet because you know yeah burb. Burb. burb so while that's drying i just want to take a second so you guys can see you folks can see what the old man looks like one. And yeah. you can see, like I said, this is a highly detailed mini because look at the staff. You can see you have like the rope and the wrap and the grooving, grooving happening, folds in the fabric, the details on the satchel. Move my one of these lights is doing a flare on me with a camera. This is the problem when they come primed as white because boy howdy, the camera mm -hmm. does not like. And you can see, look at there's all these fun little details on the top of the cape. So they're really pretty oh, yeah. metals. Absolutely. They're, they're really pretty in terms of details, but that's why I'm doing what we are doing today. He's the greatest. Hey, listen, I've been looking forward to this all week. Uh, right? Scatterbones wanted to know, what do you keep your paint on? Um, I Depends. use a paper plate. I will use paper plate if I know this is something where it's going to be like a one and done type of situation. I also have a wet palette, which I'll use every so often. And that wet palette is basically... Something spongy underneath that you keep damp and then you put what is essentially parchment paper on top and it is in a container that you can seal shut and helps keep the paints uh, more paint-like for longer as opposed to drying out on you. Mm -hmm. I will give a recommendation. Uh, paper plates are absolutely awesome. They're very inexpensive, obviously. Um, get the ones that are, if not waterproof, say something like... Like the coating on it. Yeah, can, is yeah. good for wet foods because yeah. what I've discovered, and they don't cost too much more to do that, but it's totally worth it because what I've discovered is wet paint on one of the paper plates that doesn't hold a wet food just mm -hmm. gets soaked into the paper plate. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, why is it eating through oh, my paper plate? Yeah. Yep. So. Um, here, let me see if I can show you. You can see maybe. Mm -hmm. Um Maybe I can show you. So this side has a sealed finish on it. And the other side, see how this is kind of shiny and the other side's matte. This side has a coat on it to keep wet foods and liquids from seeping through. This side does not. So if you're getting paper plates that look like this very matte, they're not gonna, they're gonna eat the yeah. pizza. <laughs> yep. It's not the end of the world. It just, no. it just You'll means go through. it's, yeah. Yeah, and if you have a lot of paint, you know, like if this was a big mini, yeah. Uh, or a huge mini. Then by the time you're halfway through the black, it'd be like, ugh. Let's also, see. I saw you grab a, a white. Dead white. So now we're going to do dead white. We're going to do a little bit of just make sure your mini is um, dry to the touch. Because mm. we're going to do a very light coating of dry brushing with this. Um, but we're not going to dry brush the entire mini. Because what I want to do is you can see how Dahani has that lovely red stripe mid center of her wings. We're going to, on this mini, see how there's this mid-center point of these smaller feathers here? Yeah. We're going to use this midsection, and we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing with the white here. So on this layer and that layer there to bring out the detail. But then we're going to leave this portion black, as well as the very uppermost portion black on the wings. And on the so tail. So just where the red would be is where we're going to draw. Just where the red would be. Exactly. And we're going to do a similar thing here on the tail. We're going to do literally just, <clears throat> pardon me, this midpoint right here is where we're going to do the dead white dry brush. And then we're going to do the dry brush on basically where there's clothing on the forearms, but not the hands and not the feet. So basically like um, wrists and up and ankles and up on the body and also we're going to avoid the face okay okay sounds like a plan yeah i like how we have cypher and herb talking about heights of their characters in the chat right now right yep see it's always fun when the content creators jump in to hang out with us and uh the other fun thing is you know, timing wise, we're kind of keeping in mind that Rivals is going to be starting up its next season soon. Yeah. February 5th. So, right? I think it's the 5th. Um, correct me if I am wrong. But yes, uh, the next season. I think it's start later, but I'm just keeping an eye on the chat. Yeah. Because we've got two people in chat who are kind of experts. Yes, that's just <laughs> it. But I'm very happy that we're getting some uh, Rivals related content out before their season kicks into gear. Yeah. So see, just very lightly like this. Because we still want that darker tone to be happening in the recesses of the feathers. 
but we also want the red to show through. And if you put a dark red on top of dark black, it basically looks like a dark blood red. Ah, okay. Yeah. So this is kind of our um, color corrector for those of you who like to get into that color theory factor. It gives you more of a neutral tone to work off of as opposed to a darker tone. The other thing that I like about when we get content creators on who bring their, their champions is it's, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, Urban says, Revels of Waterdeep does indeed return for season, season 15 on February 5th. And, I got it right. Uh, <laughs> you got it right. You got it right. And uh, yeah, there will be in-game alerts. So if you happen to be playing uh, Idol Champions at the time, you can come pop on over and watch the shoe. Now, heads um, up, there's a sneaky reach in the back because there are feathers that you can reach behind here on the back of the tail. Mm. Underneath on the bottom. Yeah, I was just working on the... Yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Back of the... The back part of the wings here. Wings. See, I started with the tail and you started with the wings. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was just because that was the first thing you mentioned was mm -hmm. where oh, the yeah. wings. And that's kind of where I was thinking, but, you know. Totally fine. The... But like, so we get in content creators and we ask them all these questions and it's interesting what stuff that you, that they haven't thought of before. And, and I include myself in this of like mm -hmm. things like, you know, how, how tall are you or how old are you are not always things that you think about with your right. character. You know, you have like a general <laughs> idea of like, ah, they're short, they're tall. Um, they're, they're young, they're old. Oh, hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. Everybody say hi to the kitty. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> But it's always it's always fun when it's like, well, uh, but she is this old, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then some people have very specific answers for some stuff and then not very specific answers for others, which is oh, yeah. it's just cool. It is. I enjoy it. Um, I mean, I had I had specific answers for age and height, but that was because my my champion had gone through some age and height adjustments during her time on Heroes of the Plains. Oh, so, yeah. you know, it was important for me to track that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I know when I had, it was time for me to chat with everyone about Nika. I had the advantage of having been in many other content creator calls. <laughs> so you knew what was going to be asked. I pretty much filled out the document added. I'm like, da, 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 da. there you go. Here we go. <laughs> Done. No, nope, mine was a, mine was a fun surprise. I remember, I remember being in the call with Dupuy and being like, because the questions that he asked that were more of a surprise had to do with um, it wasn't it wasn't items because I had more items than I knew what to do with. Mm. Um, oh, it was it was like uh, power sets and stuff because she. I mean, I know what her power set is, but mm -hmm. as far as in a video game context, like, okay, well, how does how does bringing people back from the dead work? Yeah, you know, how does yeah yeah what's what's okay? You, so you pray to a phoenix. How does how is that gonna work in the game? Well, let's figure that out. Yeah, it's always fun to hear what content creators are sort of thinking about as they go along. Mm -hmm. I'm just pausing so people can see what I'm doing here. The tail and the wing. So that's a wing and a tail done. I'm going to yes. use the other wing now. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so, starting to eye the clothing here because you said clothing and arms, but not hands. Yeah, basically work wrists up and ankles up. Okay. And then avoid the face too. Avoiding the face. Let me pop on over here. Oh, Mars is now uh, heading out and Martin is back. So welcome back, Martin and Mars. Go enjoy your break. We've... Hello and goodbye <laughs> at the same time. Yep, yep. You know, sometimes in order for folks to have a break, you just got to exactly. hand off hand yep. off responsibilities. You say goodbye while I say hello. Hi, Mars. Hi, Mars. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do there. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, oh, and I just saw a Cypher in chat asking about that we're, we're dry brushing already. And that's, this has been one of the things that I think I was most surprised about when I started painting 
with V is learning about uh, dry brushing when it's not the final step of a mini. Mm-hmm. And like the cool things you can do with dry brushing when it's like, oh no, this is actually like the second step you're going to do. Wait, what? Yep. Break the rules because the techniques are what are good to get a handle on. But when it comes to painting, you don't have to hold to what uh, some people say. Well, actually, these are the rules of mini painting because half the time you're missing out on doing some really cool effects by changing it up a little bit. Um, God, for the longest time I had people when I was um, first showing how to do mini painting like, well, you know, you're really not supposed to do that. Well, who said? <laughs> who said? It's the rule of cool for mini painting. Pretty much, yeah. If it works. Yeah. I feel so awkward trying to get like under the tunic and, and around yeah, that I gotta start part of the those. mini. No Hemingway. No like kitty, no. Not so. Kitties are like, wait, you're working on a burb? Right. We chase I'm interested in birds. <laughs> Hemingway. Oh, you know what they're doing? They're trying to go for, there's this area on my desk that gets nice and toasty warm. Mm. And they're trying to jump up there. Problem is right now, that's where I have my palette and my water. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. One more time and I'm kicking y'all out. You think I'm kidding, sir. I am not. Uh, Cypher also brings up a, a really cool point about doing speed painting and mm -hmm. learning techniques for that. And like, I will say when we did the speed paint of the two skeletons, mm -hmm. I think that was, I think that's the only one we've done so far. But yeah, it is, it is a really cool way of learning a lot of techniques really fast. Yeah. Uh, especially on, on tiny, tiny minis. I'm still pretty Yee proud of those, minis. those skellies. Yeah, yeah skellies are a great way to start learning how to do... Anything that is um, army-esque in terms of like you can do multiples and you can see multiples on your table, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's skeletons, whether it's goblins, whether it's kobolds, whether it's, you know, gnolls and bugbears, like, those are always great for doing speed paints or learning how to do speed paint on because more often than not, you're not just going to sit down and paint a singularity. You'll find yourself painting, oh, I need six of these because of the encounter I have set up. Um, yeah. So learning how to do speed paints on those type of creatures is really a great uh, way to get into it. I accidentally got some white on the thumb. Oh, that's okay. Whoopsie. That can be corrected after. The goal is to get the majority if possible. I mean, Dahani is also a painter, yeah. so she's exactly. got a splattering of a of a color in a place it's that not the end of the world. she's not used to. It's just, it's just she was painting before she got into right. her Spelljammer outfit. Plus, you can just go back and give it a dab of black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Yeah, it's hard to show off once again in my camera. That was one of the things I was going to do on the break. Is I was going to look into getting a camera that would Ooh. be able to handle the back and the forth, closer up of the mini painting, and money and time happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that works out? Yeah, money and money time. Money and time, they like to hang out together. Yeah. They're like the mean girls of life. It's like, okay, I've got this much money and this much time to do these many things. And it's like, well, as much as I want a camera just so I can show off minis during paint and slay, I need to do other things that are going to work for more things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So Y'all are just going to have to wait and look at my socials for when I post the the really nice pictures on socials because now i have a really nice camera that does that you do yeah macro micro Ooh. and macro Ooh, it's fun. we like that do, 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 do. let me pause to show you what i'm doing Let's see you can start seeing how this is shaping up yeah i'm getting those highlights on uh, be so because you posted about this, I'll go ahead and ask. Bay Neon wants to know how Hemi is doing. Hemi is definitely much better today. Context is um, the whole reason why Idle Insights last night, last night, yesterday. Well, it was night for me, so valid. Yeah. Um, the reason why we did Idle Insights as a pre-recording is because um, Hemingway on Wednesday, I found him sitting uh, across from my office, and he was breathing like he had something stuck in his nose. 
um, to nice. the point I actually called the vet. I'm like, uh, he's got, sounds like there's something stuck in his nose. And then of course, after the vet's like, well, you have to take him to the emergency vet. And I'm trying to figure out how to have that happen on my Wednesday evening. Um, soon as I hung up with the vet, Hemingway sneezed and reminded me of like when I had a toddler child and a cold. <laughs> so I called my vet back up. I'm like, well, I'm thinking he might have an upper respiratory infection. Uh, mm. So the rece- receptionist is like, well, we can get you in, but we can get you in at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, my side. I was like, hmm, that makes things tricky because that I don't know how long this vet appointment is going to take because, you know, sometimes vets run behind. Sometimes they want to do more things and just listen. And then it turns into an hour visit. And then I'm doing all the mental math. Like I literally had the numbers floating around my head. <laughs> and um, exactly. And so I messaged Trevor really quick. I'm like, so could we pre-record Idle Insights so that I can get Hemi to the veterinary and not be stressed out about getting home on time because I'm going to have to drop him off and then run back out to go and pick up the kids from school at the same time? (laughs) And so uh, Trevor, thankfully, was like, yeah, sure, let's just do that. Um, But yeah, got Hemi. Yeah, got Hemi to the vet. Sure enough, it's an upper respiratory infection, which I kind of figured was the case. Um, I used to do animal rescue stuff and I got very well versed in animal care. Um, mm. so he's doing better. He got a lovely steroid shot, um, Ooh. which I was concerned about because sometimes cats, when they get steroid shots, they get very amped up. Um, oh. yeah. Hemingway on the other hand is just like, yo, I kind of like this heating pad. I'm just going to chill here for now. <laughs> so he got that. There you go. That is his antibiotics. So I have to give him medicine in the morning and at night now. But that again is... For me, not that bad of an issue because I'm used to giving cats medicine. Well, and your cats are also very lovey-dovey. Oh, and so... are are more than happy to be yeah. uh, held and pet and cuddled and everything. So because that's hopefully. how I make sure to raise them. <laughs> so hopefully that'll make that process a lot. It easier. does. Oh yeah, I just pop him on my lap. I just you know uh, his jaw and pop the dropper in and we're good. How was that again? No, how'd that go? Ah. Uh. Open up, say, ah. Sorry, I just like the ah noise. Ah. It's very appropriate. Ah, ah, ah. He actually makes that and noise now everyone in, <laughs> And now ah. everyone in chat is sending uh, positive Aww. thoughts and warm, warm vibes to the kitties. Yay. Uh, that was my favorite part of editing and posting the, the interview, because for, for those that don't know, I produce that show. And so when it's pre-recorded, I edit it, which basically just means taking off the, the beginning and the end. So it's just the actual interview mm-hmm. and then setting everything up in OBS and all that stuff. So but that was one of the fun bits about um, doing the editing, because usually the other thing I do is a quick scrub through to make sure, right. oh, is everything, you know, did the video or audio get a little, you, you know, wonky? Um, and it turned into a fun game of when am I going to see the cat next? <laughs> when am I going to see another cat? <laughs> Oh, here had, here's the cat again. Two of the three appeared yesterday. That was the funny thing. Mm-hmm. And at one point it looked like they had, you know, ship, sh- shape shifted. Ship shifted? Yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> you put one down in your lap and another one got. It's like, wait a second. Hold How up. How did that work? <laughs> Hold up. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely, he's, he's on the mend. I think I am at the point yeah, where I got to stop. the point I want to be. Yeah. So you can see how we can see all of these details now far more. Um, and these are also the details that are going to be the brighter colors. Like there you can see into Honey's uh, skin. So that's why I wanted to do that. It makes it easier to see what we're going to paint. It also makes it easier for the paints we want to put on that are brighter in tone to remain bright. Which helps. Okay, so we did Absolutely. that. Uh, now... I lost my place on my notes. There we are. Uh, we're going to want Scarlet Red. No, that's because nope, tomorrow is not another day. day. That's scarlet red. There we go. Yes. So we're going to take scarlet red. And I want, where did I just put that brush? There it is. I'm going to take a smaller detail brush like this. And sort of using the detail brush, because I don't want to get this red everywhere. We're going to basically float this scarlet red on the top. So we're not looking to paint it in deeply. We're just looking to start giving this white more of that scarlet red tint. So I'll show you as soon as I get this going. But scarlet red from the Vallejo Paint Prismatics. D&D Prismatics, I should say. Vallejo and Whiskey. 
Yeah, I'm just going to watch because this that. isn't yeah. this isn't dry brushing and this isn't painting. This is it's, something in between. It's a little bit in between-ish. So I'm still going to remove some of the paint on a paper towel so I'm not overloaded with a brush. And then I'm just going to go in here. I'm holding this upside down because it's a little bit easier. And I'm just going to start pulling this color along the wings and gradually mm -hmm building it up because I'm trying to keep it from going into the recesses of the wings because I don't want to lose that darker shadow. Okay. There we go. So it's almost like painting each of the little wings individually, but not getting deep into it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure to the that there's still detail. a separation yeah. yep. between each of the feathers. Yep, exactly. All right. And as we get into feather work and it gets a little harder for us to talk because both of us, both of us are just like details, details. Remember, you can ask questions in Absolutely. chat that we will eventually get to. We won't miss because we've got the amazing Martin in chat grabbing them. Just make sure you put question in big capital letters mm -hmm. before your question. So that way Martin can grab it and put it in our little backstage chat and I don't miss it. So that way every once in a while. I miss a thing. <laughs> that way I'm, every once in a I while I have a reason to look up. I am so on random mode today. I mean, that wasn't random. That was that was totally I, you know, I'm just impressed that you're pulling out all, all the old that's, school songs. That's just it. Like, if I get to the point where it's like, I'm kind of worn down, my rain's kind of gone, not on vacation, but just not as intensely focusing on things, for mm -hmm. some reason, my song association kicks into high gear and, like, people will say things and suddenly I'm just singing a song. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm just impressed about the number of songs that you can pull out because, like, I've I've got songs in my head, but a lot of them are classical music, so it's not stuff I can just well, sing. Well, I mean, that makes sense, though, considering you are a professional oboist. Yeah, but it's a lot more fun when you can sing, you know, 80s and 90s tunes. Well, I was and also, you can, like, you, can... you know, high school vocal chorale and college chorus, so <laughs> there are a lot of songs in my head. <laughs> so I, I'm going to tell a story from high school, which Yay. makes me sound super old. I did not do choir when I was in high school because I was the band kid. Also, I'm I'm just not an amazing singer. And it's okay. It's, you totally. know, yeah. I can sing technically, but I'm it's just not my jam. So I was never in choir. And that was fine until my senior year, right towards the end of the year. Why do I feel um, like this needs a dun dun dun? <laughs> it, it's not that serious but it's it's okay. one of those moments in where um the lauren gamed the system a little bit Ooh. so when we were getting ready I, I never thought about it for graduation because all the years before as the band kid i was always in the band playing the high school you know play, mm -hmm. playing music in the band while the graduation was going on right but here we go. It's my turn to graduate. And suddenly, you know, they're they're going through all of the details about where you're going to sit and how you're going to go through things. And they're doing things in alphabetical order, which is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm used to being at the end of the alphabet. I don't really care about going first or anything. But I realized because they want us to sit in the audience in alphabetical order, I'm not sitting next to any of my friends. I'm like, oh. well, this sucks because I know that this is a a thing that's going to go on for <laughs> multiple hours. And mm -hmm. I want to sit with my friends for graduation. And what I found out was that you could sit, that you had to sit in alphabetical order unless you were in the choir that was going to sing during the oh. point of the point of the ceremony where they were going to sing. I don't even remember what they were singing. Um, and so suddenly, a uh, band kid joined choir. Just... <laughs> Just, to, just sing. to sit with your friends, just to sit with my friends, just so I could sit with everybody uh, during high school graduation. And Amazing. fortunately, the choir director in our high school was a, a very kind man mm -hmm. who knew exactly what I was doing uh -huh. and was like, all right, kid, uh, you, you can sing some tenor parts, right? Just just be over here. I know you know what you're doing. It'll be fine. But when I when I went to go ask about 
uh, suddenly being in choir for the senior choir for the graduation. I I do distinctly remember getting the the look of really uh huh now and then and then he kind of figured it out. He was uh-huh. he was fairly astute. So yeah, that's my one <laughs> choir experience <laughs> was to game the system so that I could sit with my friends all the way back many 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 years ago in high school. I was mean. Fun. To me, that sounds like a win-win, though. You get to sit with your friends and sing at the same time. It was it was a, a win. I got to sit with my friends. And singing wasn't bad, but like, you know, it, it it's fair. not my jam. Totally fair. But absolutely got to got to sit with my friends. And then there you go. every graduation after that for college was also just, okay, what what can I do to mm-hmm. not have to sit in this audience for three years? Mm-hmm. Fair. I, oh, my my high my college graduation, my undergrad, we almost had Maya Angelou as our guest speaker. And I was Ooh. so excited. And at the very last minute, I don't know what happened. Uh either she couldn't do it or there was a, a scheduling something. I don't remember exactly what happened. But I was so excited about our graduation getting Maya Angelou. I'm like, this I want to be up front. It's incredible. This is gonna be amazing. And then it didn't happen. And then I almost didn't go. Like, oh. that was the difference of like, oh, wait, my angel is going to talk. I want to be in the front row and just be there the whole time. Oh, wait, she's not going to be there. Meh. Meh. <laughs> Meh. No. Meh. No. All right. So here's Meh. one of the wings with this. I beg your pardon. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> my handle oh, is amazing. magnetic. My camera arm is metal. Guess what just mm. happened? Um, yep. But here you can see how I've just put on this lovely, brilliant scarlet red. And because we've done that white underneath, that color shows up a lot better than if we had just gone in and done it straight over the black. It would have been far more muted. So that's why we've done this little trick in between. Yeah. So I'm going to go start getting the tail. Back feathers done. I'm still I'm working on the tail the, feathers. From the front, and I still got to do the tail. Come on, let me see you shake your tail feather. Come on, let me see you shake your tail feather. Just over there. But but not Twist while you're it! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I can't remember who the the person was that replaced replaced that was asked to come on in uh when Maya Angelou couldn't speak because I I didn't really want to go at that point. It wasn't yeah. someone I was excited to go listen to speak and be at a graduation for two and a half hours. At the time, I was excited for who it was. Mm-hmm. Not so much anymore. Yeah. I mean, that happens, yeah. too. Yeah. It definitely happens. So, yeah. But I did go... So our... I went to Ithaca College, and so the college had the That's big... A college. Everybody... I enjoyed it. Yes. Uh, so the university had the the big, 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 big graduation. And then you went back to your individual colleges to go get your diploma. And so, yeah, for both my undergrad and my grad, I just skipped out on the big thing and just went mm-hmm. straight to the music school to go talk to the people who I actually knew and mattered and everything. Mm-hmm. Also, they're I mean, the place that, that had like, like the post-graduation luncheon that was happening right okay yeah so, that makes so sense. we all just showed up early in jeans and a t-shirt to chat with people and get snacks Aww. and it was great it was That's great. lovely it was i like it oh these tail feathers come on come on tail feathers i don't know why these are more difficult than the wing feathers You know what's funny true. is I remember both my high school and my college alma mater songs because of being in the chorus. I had to know them. <laughs> I just realized that. I'm like, what are these songs floating in my head as she's talking about college? I'm like, those are the alma maters. I mean, that's impressive. <laughs> I-, I don't remember any of my alma mater oh, songs. God. Nope. And they were similar to each other, which didn't help. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, my college was amid the towering forest, our halls of glory stand. Thy name, our purpose to uphold, will spread throughout the land. Thy colors ever glorious, still wave on high, so true. 
All hail our school forevermore. All hail the green and blue. And then <laughs> high school was. Hmm? Yeah. High school no, was go enter ahead, the gate and climb the hill. See around you nature in full. A tower that soars to the heavens above. Beyond it lies the school we love. <laughs> it's just. But I'm not going to sing the rest because then the school gets named and everything like that. And I'm, no. <laughs> nope. Not worth it. Nope. But I think I think those kind of alma mater songs, I think they all have yeah. a very similar style feel. Th- mm. uh, I think they all kind of just follow the same the same pattern. They do. It was just I remember like switching between the two and I was like, oh, well, I can remember the one because it reminds me of the other. Cool. <laughs> I'm good. Just talk about like the forest and stuff. <laughs> You'd figure as a music major, I would remember my alma mater theme song, but nope, 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 nope. Man, getting the feathers Behind under the, the up, under the, the tail. The butt. No pun intended. Yeah, the honey's <laughs> butt. Oh, da honey, why does your why do your butt feathers have to be so hard to reach? There, I said it. All right, now I got to do the other way. But yeah, now you're seeing why this is going to be a two episode mini because we have a lot of individual detail work to do. Yeah. Well, I'd, you know, like we said before, I'd rather go nice and slow. Mm-hmm. And if we end up having extra time, like that's fine. Yeah. I'd rather have that than be getting to the end of this episode and be scrambling to try to finish. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're trying to do fine details like individual feathers on wings. Right. So I have like one of my most favorite reels that anytime I see it on like Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, I must stop and watch. Um, Yeah. I've actually shared it with Dupuy because it's freaking hysterical. Uh, But if you hear me going, yep, it's because I'm pulling it from (laughs) this particular reel. It's this little girl. She has chocolate all over her face. And her mother says, uh, like, basically is questioning her. And she goes, so um, what's on your face? And the little girl has, like, the biggest eyes. And she goes, so I had some ramen, and I got the ramen on my face, and then I washed it off. And you hear the mom's voice go, with chocolate? And the little girl goes, yep. (laughs) Yep. Just like, yep. Hey, listen. She's proud of discovering that chocolate can be a soap. (laughs) <laughs> she just so gleefully admits it yep she used chocolate mm-hmm. oh geez now i want some chocolate oh well, that yeah. doesn't take much actually I, I, I may have like indulged in some chocolate before the stream just oh because hmm? uh, oh. well first off now i'm excited to indulge in some chocolate after the stream but also the mole's revenge has an interesting question that probably came up back when we were uh, talking about other things, they want to know for both of you, what's your favorite James Bond theme song? <sighs> oh, I mean, I, I'm, I don't. The world is not enough. It's good, yeah. That one for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've seen all the James James Bond movies, so I don't know if I could accurately pick one. But the world is not enough is is a real yeah. good one. Well, I was also a huge because that's sung by the um, lead singer of Garbage, right? I'm yeah, remembering correctly, and I was a huge Garbage fan. It's just a good the song band. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what you were talking about. These days, I feel like sometimes you have to give context. Mm-hmm. And just to be clear, uh, with this red, we're just doing the feathers, right? There's not another spot that we're going after. with Just the feathers. Yep, just the feathers are getting the scarlet red. Okay, cool. I'm just finishing up a couple of details. And also watching where you are painting, because I feel like where I look for where feathers end and where you look for feathers end, it's not slightly. that one it's is okay yeah. yeah it's just interesting because i usually i usually end up looking up and go oh, oh yeah i should probably do that feather okay, <laughs> that makes sense yeah i'm trying basically i'm trying to give this enough real estate so it nods to having a good amount of the uh color yeah on the mini. 
I'm also quite happy because feathers are one of the textures I have so much fun painting. Oh, yeah. And especially on a mini like this that has such clear definition of feathers. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. It, it's like with the dragons with the scales. It's You can just get every single scale yeah. if you wanted to and you had time. Oh, Angel Sparks says Garbage is still touring and making amazing albums. <gasps> I love it. I mean, good for yeah, them. I mean, I remember following Shirley for a while when I was far more active on Facebook, which I definitely am no longer. Um, so yeah, it's been a few years since I've kept myself updated on what garbage is doing but boy did i absolutely grab my you know cd player portable cd player pop on the headphones and just like listen to that dang thing on repeat oh yeah sorry i had a nostalgia hit right there right mm. the disc man that's what it was called disc man like what was it it wasn't a walkman i had Many, many, many years ago, when I lived for a couple years in Florida, mm -hmm. I had a um, a portable CD player that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. It was in a it was in a Jeep that I owned that was um, bumpy. It did not have an amazing suspension, so of course, as I'm driving along, I, I would often the, the CD would skip because the CD uh -huh. player would burp, burp, burp. right. It it wasn't a very expensive. Even at the time. Yeah. Um, my car got broken into. And the only thing they stole out of the car was my mixtapes, because I still had a tape player, because it was <sighs> that. It was still that time. N not the CDs, but the portable CD player. Oh, bummer. They stole my mixtapes and the CD player, but not the CDs. They, that was also... I know, right? Right. That was also um, I had a I had a geo tracker with mm -hmm. the soft top, and instead of just unzipping the soft top to get into my car, they you slashed into it? open. They Stop slashed open it. the back. Yeah, I was more upset about that than I was about anything they stole in the thievery. car. <laughs> right? Like, and they literally punctured the back window right where you could just unzip. Like, I would unzip the back window on a very regular basis just for yeah. airflow and things. And they were just like, oh, well, now I have to get on. a whole new back window. Oh, that's me. Ah. All, right, All right. So we're going to keep honey. doing. Yeah, we're going to keep going with the wing work. <laughs> um, and what we're going to do is take the dead white and the black and we're going to make like a uh, charcoal gray. And we're going to do a similar thing like what we did just now with the scarlet, but because we're putting it on top of the black, it's going to stay a darker color, but it'll give the black area some depth by just going through it. And I'll, I'll show you. So we want to mix this to be a charcoal gray. Okay. How much of each? Um, I'm going to do a dot of each and then brush in accordingly. Actually, I still have a good amount of white left from the dry brushing. So I'm going to just add my black to that because it's about an equal amount dot to dot. Okay. And then mix that together and see. Yeah, I'm happy with equal parts. Okay. Equal parts uh, white to black. Okay. And then, like I said, keeping up with the wing work, I'm going to go back in and just start to basically highlight the edge of each wing. It's going to be subtle. I don't even know if the camera's going to pick it up. But you will see with your eye as you start to do this, like just painting, painting? No, painting a strip on the upper edge of the wing, how it creates this differentiation a little bit there. Okay. And if need be, you can switch to an even smaller detail brush. But the purpose is to kind of keep it on that raised edge that you can see on the wing, like that. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Yeah, I think that's it's that it's is very subtle on camera. To the naked eye, it'll pop out more. Mm hmm. But it does make just, a world of difference. Just so I'm looking at it correctly, when you say the top, you literally mean standing upright. This the yeah. top of the wing. Yep. Okay. The, top of the wings 
Or the feathers, rather. Yeah. Like a highlighting. Exactly. And are we doing it with all the wing or just the, the ones that are still painted? We're going to do it with all of the black feathers. Okay. Just to give those feathers a little bit more interest, visual interest than a flat black. Okay. And then for these shorter ones on the top, what I'm going to do is still with that smaller detail brush, I'm going to kind of bring it down the center because the center is what has a raised edge as opposed to the side of it. Again, it's very subtle, very, very subtle, but it makes a difference in the texture of the wings. Yeah, I have noticed with uh, all black or all white, it can't just be all black or all white or mm -hmm. else it's just flat. It becomes very yeah, flat and boring. Boring. There, you can kind of see it happening there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now you can kind of see uh, mm -hmm. the highlighting. Yeah. You got it. Hey. Oh, wow. It's already past three. Yeah. Hey, uh, if you've just happen? joined us, uh, you know, it's like we're having fun or something. <laughs> Go figure. If you've just joined us from the game, welcome. Happy Friday. Hope you're having fun unlocking Fen and gearing her up in these last couple of of days. days of the event um we are currently painting dahani in her uh spell jammer outfit which you can see on the bottom there um this is day one of our paint and we're enjoying if you have uh if you'd like to join us either right away or you know join us next week when we have a part two you can go to our discord discord.gg slash idle champions and see all of the stuff that you need, which is not a lot of stuff, to be honest. No. Mm. And then also we do have uh, the amazing Martin in chat who is grabbing your questions. So if you do have questions about the game, if you have questions about mini painting, if you have questions apparently about our alma maters yeah. that we can answer, go ahead and put those in chat with question in big capital letters. So that way uh, Martin can grab it because right now we're working on details on wings and so I'm not always looking at the chat. Sorry, chat. But Martin will make sure that we don't miss your questions. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, sometimes you just got to focus on these tiny, tiny little wings. Mm hmm This is why moderators are a valuable resource when it comes to doing mini painting streams. Oh, yes. Absolutely. All right. I think... I think that's one wing, I think. Yeah, I've got the one wing done. I think that's a one winged angel. Yep. We're going to reference songs. <laughs> nice. Okay. Other, Nicely other wing. Nicely done. Other wing. Yeah, this will be one of those things that will show up more in the picture I'm going to mm -hmm. take when we're done here than, than anything. Oh, yeah. But Absolutely. You're absolutely right that it, I don't want to say it's obvious, but it's, you can definitely see it in person. Yeah. It's clearer in person. The camera wants to mute it down because I mean, cameras can only do truly so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even your camera, which is specific, I want to say specific, but, but yeah. tuned well for mini painting mm -hmm. is only so much you can do. Yeah. Whereas, whereas I got one that just wants to focus on faces. And so, yeah. Yep. Yep. Also, the nice thing about this is there's a couple of wings on the top that I accidentally got a little bit of red on. And now I'm like, now you can go back boop, over. Boop with the gray. Boop. Just gone. Whoops. Boop. Yep. <sighs> Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. Yeah. And hopefully next week we'll be able to talk about uh, some more of the minis that we'll be doing as the season Ooh. progresses. Because, yeah, we're back into 20, 
It's the beginning of the year again. I mean, we could talk about the one that's going to happen after this if you want to at the end of the show today. I mean, I trust you. I just can't remember what that one is. Oh, I remember. (laughs) I remember. I mean, you got the memory. Like I said, I trust you. Yeah, we'll show it off. I know there's one coming further down the line that I'm excited about. Uh Yeah, I didn't do that side yet. But yeah, definitely keep an eye on the Discord for those minis. Um, And you don't have to get the new paint kits. If you'd bought the... uh, I'm blanking on the name of the kit that we had suggested. The Vallejo the, set? The, starter set? Yeah, the Vallejo, the starter set. If you've got that, you can definitely still paint along with us. Yeah, you might just have to be doing some interesting mixing of colors here and there. Yeah, but even then, so far, yeah. like, it's been black and white yeah. and red. red. Yep. Pardon. Bless you? <laughs> Bless you. Oh, okay. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, I might have put a little more gray on there than I wanted to, but that's fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Please and then the tail it. feathers too, right? Yes, the tail feathers. They actually have like kind of like the top. How there's almost like this raised portion. That's the mm-hmm. part you want to highlight. Okay. So let me do one really quick so you can see. So it's almost like down the center you want to bring it. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, get back here. I'm going to rinse my brush. There we go. Question of the day is where did I leave off with here? I think it was right here. It's not just highlighting, it's like we're adding our own lighting. Mm-hmm. All right, and now the fun part, getting under under the butt. Yeah, and if it, it gets extremely awkward and just not as easy to reach, it's okay. You don't have to focus as much underneath because quite frankly, that would be a shadowed area. Yeah. So it wouldn't have as much of that. <laughs> Oh, it's an excuse also for me to get real close to the microphone. There you go. This is just the way I set everything up is like the closer I need to get to the mini, the closer I get to the microphone. It just turns into an ASMR stream. It's fine. There we go. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Come on, let me see you shake your tail feather. I have that song stuck in my head and I did that to myself. You yep. only have yourself to blame. Completely and totally. All right. Sorry, I'm just checking in on everything. No, totally. I also, cool. I also had to double check because, uh, we were so used to having Garwar on after oh, us. Oh, what's on next? That's a good point. Is it new formation? I believe so. I'm I'm literally triple checking. You think because I'm in charge of this, I would know it off the top of my head? Formation save formation is going to be. Save. Yeah, with Sean and Mark. Oh, I just, I combined you. (laughs) I just smashed two streams together. I mean, I mean, it wasn't that far off. So yes, formation save is going to be happening after us. So definitely (laughs) stick around if you have questions about formations. Mars and Sean will be able to help. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, in the new year, we've got, we've got a Garwar before us. So I was just thinking about, uh, I was just thinking about talking about what's coming up next. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to double check. Mm hmm. There we go. Or just, you know, That's... come up with a whole new stream name and talk about them all at the same time inadvertently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Sean, we're just making you do a whole new show now. I hope you yep. don't mind. It's a new formation. <laughs> Uh, Bellswin asks a fun mm. question that I can actually answer. Uh, what happened to the slay part of Paint and Slay? Old streams had you showing us the game. Absolutely. Here's the thing. In order to spend the couple of seconds to show you in the game where these creatures were, there was actually a, a surprising amount of stuff that had to happen just mm-hmm. because of uh, 
the number of cameras that we have going on here and the fact that V is the one producing and, and all sorts of stuff. So it was a lot of extra work for not a lot of payoff. Yeah. So it's a little easier to just talk about it, especially since a lot of the people here in our chat are either familiar enough with the game to recognize the creatures or it's stuff like uh, this with Dahani where, well, if you have her her skin then you know what we're talking about and if not we've that that's also why the picture down there has become mm -hmm. much more important so that everybody yeah. has a point of reference at least for the game yeah um but we yeah make a it, point to pull minis that you can find of characters or creatures in the game itself yep. whether they are slaying the creatures or you are slaying the creatures type of situation everything you see here will appear in idle champions itself um issue being i am running a dual camera setup because hi and Hi, <laughs> which is actually a big pull on your computer. And then when you mm. throw in trying to run Idle Champions itself from my computer, it would crash it. So Lauren so was, yeah, running it on her computer, which then created a hopscotch, which then realized got to be really chunky and choppy and not yeah, visually pleasing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if so V is the one producing, so I'd have to send her. Yeah. There are ways of basically me sending her video of the game as it was running on my computer, but you lose a lot of the quality. Yeah. And for the couple, for like the minute, minute and a half that we would show it off, it just wasn't it wasn't worth it mm -mm. because it didn't look good, especially since we had, well, what we used to have was uh, a show before and a show after. Well, we still yeah. have it. A show we before and after. Have. Showing, showing the game. the game yeah, and looking gorgeous. And then we'd come yeah. along and be like, like minis, minis. A good game. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Doop -doop -doop -doop. It, so yeah, that's, that's It was a cost-benefit analysis was done. Mm -hmm. And so we, we stopped trying to make that work and went back to j just doing the awesome mini stuff. Yeah. So I'm taking what's left of this charcoal gray and I'm painting it, kind of doing a similar idea onto the feet and the hands. Um, All right. So just kind of adding, a, is that the toe or is that a hiccup? No, it's a toe. Um, just that to kind of bring out, like I, like if the plastic had hiccuped on itself, sometimes it happens. You're like, oh, is that Oh, I thought you were there? mentioning something about like you hiccuping. No, no. Like did the um, mold line hiccup over a detail that was supposed to be there or not? Mm. So yeah, just, and it's three toes and a dew claw in the back for the feet. And a and hands that have five five yeah the the full on hand you know four, four fingers, fingers and a thumb, and a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> which is not always the case with some of these uh, D and D creatures. Sometimes they get to be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, even even the player, even the the lineages that you can play as a player sometimes. Mm -hmm. The, the oh, weirder yeah. ones, it's like, ah, uh, four fingers. Mm, that's it. Yep. I'm also using or it depends charcoal. on the art. I'm doing a little bit around the face here. But I'm taking that detail brush and just sort of floating it a little bit. Just to catch those high points. Okay. Just around the face. The beak, leaf bee, the beak, we're going to do a different type, similar technique, but different color. Where's that third? Where are you, third claw? He's hiding. You're, you're there somewhere. There you are. Now, let's see. There's a question. Do you have magnifying glasses between you and the mini or just really good light? I have really good light. Um, I have two key lights, one on either side, and I have a facing forward light. So I have plenty of light, uh, which I always advocate for when you're painting minis. Lauren has Similar her own thing. setup. Yeah. Um, so because I'm not attempting to show off my mini um perfectly on stream i am mostly worried about me having enough light for myself um let me see if i could show this off so i've got my usual light to show off my face um but what i also have is a older ring light that i used to use that is literally sitting on my desk right here Ta -da. and so it's it's pointed downwards and I I have it just sitting on my desk so that I have something a light right above where I'm painting the mini so that I have really good light without 
having to be in a weird position, which is is also something that we have changed and updated as we've gone. Because yeah, yeah this this is a newer uh, a newer solution there to go. my lighting setup. Yeah. All right. Exactly. I see you're shaking paint, which means we must be moving on yes. to something else. Yes. Rust monster. <laughs> we're, we're doing a rust monster. We're doing rust monster. So we're going to go back to that red. And okay. you see how there's it gets a little bit more red towards the edges. We're going to go in and we're also going to do sort of similar to what we just did. We're going to add a touch of this rust, very light touch to the uppermost portion of these wings to highlight that out. Okay. Um, my paint really needs a good shaking. I've, I've been just assuming they all need a good shake. Yeah. Because, because. So I need to move down to an even smaller detail brush. I'm on the smallest I got. Yeah. At this I wasn't, point. Yeah, I wasn't ah. at that point. So I'm going to. Okay, so you said this is essentially exactly what we're doing with the gray, except on the red. On the red, so I'm just gonna go in, and it's it's such a light touch. It's just running a quick line mm. on the upper portion. So you're not really coating it so much as highlighting it. Just a little bit on those edges. Ooh, the tiniest of highlights. Yeah, it's, it's a very fussy detail work. But it'll pay off. It does. It really does. I also wasn't expecting this color to be as orange as it is, but I don't mm -hmm. know why. It's rust monster. It's a rust. Oh. Hey, Kaleth, Marin, welcome. Welcome to, Hello. uh, we've Thanks got way. about 25 minutes left of painting Spelljammer Dahani. <laughs> we're, we're in some of the fiddly bits of feathers. Fiddly feather bits. I like that. What are you doing? Yep. Fiddly feather bits. Yeah. It was fun to say. Yeah. Fiddly dee. I'm very intentionally doing the back of the wings because those are, at least in my opinion, the, the bigger feathers. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'll start with these because this will probably yeah. be the easier ones. Yeah, it's just basically catching some highlights in the wings just to give it a little bit more visual depth. So you can see there how it just creates a different look to it. Yeah. But definitely getting to those smaller wings is a bit more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Pardon my own. <laughs> so since mm. you talked about, well, this wasn't even the smallest brush that you had, and now you've downgraded to an even smaller brush, what is the smallest paintbrush that you have uh not this one it's actually not an arm's reach it's it's this really nice brush that i only bring out for when i'm doing bust work mm -hmm. beauty busts um because i like how it does uh the details in the eyes that i want to do uh, ah. I, who was it who made it it's not the mod podge line it is oh it's got a blue handle langley nickel think is what the set was called is what the yeah. set is called and it just has a really nice small brush that i like to use on like i said when i'm doing um i work on mini busts and is it basically like one it's one brush comparable, one it's little? comparable it's comparable to this but it's actually a longer um set of bristles like it goes okay. a little bit longer so it means I can do more finite movement and it'll still translate in the motion. Okay. Onto the mini. Yeah. 
So at that point, it's less about the number of bristles and more about the length the of length, the brush. Yeah, yeah. Because it gives me the ability to kind of keep more distant, know that I'm touching the mini, but then the barrel of the brush isn't blocking my view. That makes sense. Yeah. I have kind of wondered how small one could go and whether longer bristles or shorter bristles would actually be better. Depends on what you're looking to do. Absolutely. And there are, I'm sure there are smaller brushes than even what I have. Um, it's just a matter of finding your resources and seeing what works for you as a painter. Because what works for you may not work for others and what works for others may not work for you, I have discovered. Yeah. Like I brought a bus, I brought, <laughs> try that again, rewind. I bought a brush set, which is a tongue twister today, folks, that everyone was recommending up, left, right, down, and did not end up liking them. Nope. Just didn't feel good? Didn't feel good. I didn't like how the bristles uh, functioned. They seemed more stiff, almost. Oh. Less fluid. You had to work them more, which I was like, you know... And quite frankly, it was like, yeah, I can see why some people might like them, but it just doesn't work with how I paint. And the motions, I mean. Okay, and that's the other side done, so you can kind of see how it gives it some more. Do -do. Nice. Yeah. Also, uh, Caleb Marin is asking a couple questions about... Um, you talking about your outfits for Voronika for D&D uh, &D in a Castle, which I, I know mm -hmm. is stuff that you talked about in Idol, on Idol Insights yesterday. Yeah. Um, but for those that missed it, mm -hmm. you are you are dressing up as Voronika for multiple days at D&D &D in a Castle, I hear. I am, because I'm actually going to, I'm right now currently working on a Koshmar campaign, uh, adventure campaign. So fleshing out Koshmar even more, et cetera, et cetera. I got to break out my rice and beans and make a map tomorrow. <laughs> break out your, wait, 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 wait. Break you out your rice this, and beans? You haven't heard this map making trick? No, no, okay. but I am a theater of the mind kid. So okay. tell me all about so, rice and beans. Um, Koshmar is an island in and of itself, which we talked about yesterday. So what I want to do is create the shape of the island. And a fun way to do it is you take dried rice and dried beans. Uh, you can do one or the other. I have found by doing the two, you can actually use the beans if they're big enough to kind of become like either water features or even like if you want to do like mountains or hills. Um, okay. So what you do is you just basically take a piece of paper, put it on your table. You sort of just scatter the rice in the center and just let it fall where it might. And then you take the beans and you put them on top and kind of, you know, get them in there or you can mix them together. And then basically you just trace around the mm. rice and the beans and it starts creating a land formation it's actually really kind of neat i have okay so that's cool i have heard of a similar technique that actually uses D, &D dice oh, um fun. that is i guess slightly more complicated mm. but so the idea being uh it was specific dice and depending on so you did the same thing. You got a whole handful of dice scattered on a piece of paper. Where mm -hmm. they fell gave you the vague outlines of things. Mm -hmm. And then what dice you were using determined certain aspects of the oh. land and the world. So like, and I am I know I'm getting all of these specifics wrong, but for example, if you rolled a D6, the number that came up on the D6 was... Um, like how many squares worth of forest were nearby. Oh, cool. Um, if you rolled a D4, and the number that came up in the D4 was if there was a lake nearby. Um, if you rolled a D8, how big the city was where the D8 mm. would land or oh, the town neat. or whatever. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm basically working on building Koshmar. And then for each of the days, I am going to cosplay as Voronika. And so the first day I'll be dressed as Voronika the Bride. Next day will be Voronika the Ghost, and the last day will be Voronika the Dreadlord. Should be fun. Yeah. And those of us who are Idol Champions fans will have seen uh, the whole transformation on a regular basis. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. thought it would just I'd be something fun to do. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with this type of work, because you're like, nah, goblin mode. Uh, yeah, Painting yeah, goblin yeah, mode. Sure. 
but I'm loving how detailed this this red part of the wings are working out because like mm -hmm. I think this Latia has talked a bunch in some interviews about this specific parrot that she took inspiration That's what from. I was looking at yeah and the while it's an the defining feature is this all black parrot with the red uh accented wings or feathers on the wings like it is such an important feature yeah that I'm, I'm glad that it's it's getting all this detail yeah I because especially as we yeah as we go forward with spell jammer to honey which has a lot of color to it mm -hmm. keeping the red in there is is good yeah wanted to give it its moment to shine yeah Do, do, do. Oh, and I, I thought it was done and I just saw a, a whole spot I missed. Yeah, so I gotta do I'm the gonna... back of the wings now. Almost almost there. Yeah. Well, it's also surprising how it doesn't have to be this bright, bright, bright red mm -hmm. in order to stand out. Yeah. Especially with the black. Yeah. Although certainly once we start getting into the, the hot pinks and the purples and everything for the outfit, there's going to be a lot oh, yeah. of color in this mini. I'm excited. There is. Yeah, there really is. That's a, the one of the things we don't always get to do with the creatures is... A variety of colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like get ready to be in your earth tones, get ready to be in your green tones. <laughs> yeah. All of that goodness. Okay, there we go. I missed a spot. I missed a spot. Um, oh, Kayleth Marin wants to know um, for V, how do you pull together the outfits for Voronika? Um, they're so cool. I wanted to ask after I watched yesterday's Idol Insights. Oh, um, a lot of the time it's my just sort of looking at, um, a variety of clothes just to kind of get inspiration and how I can kind of cobble them together. Um, so it's like, quite frankly, what I have for cosplay for Nika for when we do Black Dice or when we did Black Dice Society, that's all stuff I probably won't be bringing with me to be honest, because um it gets kind of bulky quickly mm. and plus it's going to be summertime when i'm there Ooh, and yeah. uh like by the end of three hours like i'll be sweating in the dartboard outfit because it's very um thick fabric based cosplay um it's actually why you'll see in some of the dark lord versions of voronika i have like the fishnet sleeves instead which are which is what you see in the uh, barovia visitor voronika skin um so I'm actually going to go back in and just look for some lightweight cotton uh, like peasant shirts and blouses and layered skirts type of thing and see how I can kind of mix and match and put them all together. I actually start with color palettes um, and then use the color palettes as sort of keywords. So uh, like for the bride, I'll be looking for pale blue peasant blouse or pale blue layered skirt and see what I can find and kind of I start saving them in lists just to kind of get ideas and see what can fit together is really how I approach it. Um, and even like the crown is so heavy. Again, I'm going to be doing this all day. So the the Dark Lord crown itself that Idol Champions does a great job of recreating, that's going to stay here um, because that sucker's like a good almost two pounds because of the beads and everything. Ooh. So by the end of three hours, I have a headache. Um, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> we're not doing that. So instead I'm looking for um, their uh, like... I think they're called like head necklaces, hair necklaces. So it's going to be stuff like, you know, cool things that drape across the forehead and across the hair and use the colors of gemstones to reflect. So like the Dark Lord one, I'm going to look for, you know, dark black gems. And then for the ghost one, dark green gems. And for the bride one, like light blues and pinks and everything. So it's kind of, yeah. that's how I riff it off. and Not riff it off, but riff off of ideas and pull things together. Is it the kind of thing in where you'd think about bringing the crown, but then setting it somewhere almost like a display piece just to continue to get the idea, oh, but not idea. have to yeah. wear it for three hours? You know? That's a night. That's actually a good idea. I might, I might do that and bring the Dark Lord crown. That could work. 
Um, but things like I'm not bringing my big DM screen that I have that will be staying here. I have this little lightweight foam one um, that I made. It's actually yeah. it's actually right under here. Um, <laughs> I'll bring that because it's light. Ooh, I didn't mean to hit the camera. Probably don't. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is have to bring like three or four different. Yeah, um, this is one that I've made that I'll bring, mm -hmm. and it's just cardboard and foam, so it's very light. So I'll bring that and one. And it's pretty. And it's unique yeah. to you, too. Yeah. So that's, it's like stuff when I'm packing to go DM, like traveling, I definitely change things up a little bit. But anyways, uh, here we go with the wings. All yeah. Highlighted up in the red. And then what do we have left? Uh, yeah, we've got about 15 minutes left. What's our last, what's our last mm -hmm. little bit? That is going to be, hold on, I got to look at my notes. Mm. Oh, black pudding. Oh, black pudding. <laughs> We're going to go to black right. pudding. That's displacer beast you're holding up. Oh, displacer beast. I mean, do I want okay. no, Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Black pudding. Yes, <laughs> I want. Let me check. <laughs> I had I had a moment. You're right. It is black pudding. I want displacer okay. beast is going elsewhere. So black okay. pudding. <laughs> gonna go for black pudding and we're gonna put this onto the beak and the claws of both the hands and the feet all right and this is it looks it initially looks black but it ain't it's actually kind of like this cool midnighty blue oh yeah yeah so because of that tonal difference it'll create this interesting um color differentiation so i'm gonna go beak in with and claws yeah so I'm going to go in and I'm just going to paint in the thick. Yeah, I had this moment when you were you were holding up one thing and no, saying another. And my, my brain went, huh? No, I'm glad you said I'm like, wait, did I grab the wrong color? Or did I say the wrong color? <laughs> I mean, they're both pretty. They are. They're both really great colors. But you can see how that now gives it a different color. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely stand out from the rest of the black. Yeah. And that's just it. I didn't want the beak to get lost in just the the blackness of it all. The yeah. Blackness. Yeah, once again, it's that whole idea of like, just because this is a creature that is primarily black, that doesn't yeah. mean that there aren't all kinds of interesting variations and details amongst that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, until I actually started using black pudding, I, I had no idea that this was, that this had any blue to it. I would have been like, oh, it's just like a different black, I guess. Yeah, just sure. a different name for black. Nope. It has a lovely midnight bluish tone to it. So it's a cool black is really what it boils down to. I mean, Dahani is a cool burb. She is a cool burb. Give the cool burb the She cool deserves black. a cool black. Agreed. There you go. Biggie, biggie. Cool now and warm it's tones are definitely. Many, many. Yes. <laughs> cool and warm tones are definitely something I'm still learning about and also surprisingly not always able to discern. I don't know if it's a me thing or, you know, both with looking at colors on a mini and then mm -hmm. also i i had not too long ago the moment of well is your skin tone a, a warm or a cool so that we can help figure out makeup stuff and i went i'm, I'm a pale white person I, I i i know that means there's there's more there yeah. to it but I, I don't know if i'm a warm or a cool i can't tell well and there's also neutral mm. um so it's like if you look at your the veins in your wrist, if they translate more of looking um, blue and purplish underneath your skin, mm -hmm. that means you're a cool tone. If okay. you look at the veins underneath your wrist and they look more of like an olive green, that means you're a warm tone. Then I'm a cool at, tone. Yeah. If you look at the veins underneath your wrist and they look like a teal blue, that means you're neutral. I am a neutral because you can see it's got like this teal bluish tone oh, to them. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very clearly... I don't know if it's going to yeah. show up on this camera as much, but yeah, looking down. Yeah. 
It 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 blew. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, and I learned that from my high school choral teacher. She was, <laughs> and it comes all the way back to chorus. <laughs> she <laughs> was, um, she was a Miss America pageant contestant. Yep, that's cool. Yep. So she took one class. Actually, she took a couple of classes to teach us how to um, put on makeup, both for theater and everyday purposes. Yeah. And with that, she taught us how to figure out your skin tone, et cetera, et cetera. That is super cool. Mm hmm. I wish I had that when I was growing up. That would have been amazing. Oh, gosh, she was she was a lot of fun. Um one time she taught us how to like do the pageant walk and we were all cracking each other up. This was after school. It was one of those mm -hmm. things. I don't remember why we were there after school. I just remember there was a group of us sitting there after school and we were getting bored and punched. She goes, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to teach you how to pageant walk. And we're like, okay. Mm -hmm. I will say, at least recently, one of the things that I think technology has helped a lot that I wish I had as a, as a, a young person, mm -hmm. um, I mean, yes, there's like YouTube videos to show you how to do stuff and tutorials that were never available when I was young. But on top of that, what I've discovered recently is there's a lot of makeup um, brands that have a website that basically do the Zoom filter thing, mm. but lets you, quote unquote, try on different colors of, of lipstick and eyeshadow. Cool. And it. I think it has to be the brighter stuff. It can't be like foundation mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. anything that is takes a much more finite matching that but makes sense. but it was really good like i sat in front of this the, in front of my computer one night at this one website and just basically oh hi the doctor there's a doctor b in the chat welcome to the end of um part one of spell time we're close too yeah. we are getting close to the end holy jamoli yeah. what the heck happened yeah we're just having fly. fun talking about choir and makeup Yes, I guess. But yeah, that's as as much as I am not a makeup person. I did sit for a very long time in front of uh, two different websites, basically going through and like, let me try on this. Mm -hmm. Let me try on oh, this. That's neat, though. That's fun. And it was very impressive how um, how much it didn't look like a obvious filter just slapped onto your face. Hmm. Like it neat. actually, especially the lipstick. Uh, I was just oh, like, oh, yeah. it really does look like I'm wearing this. This is cool. And it was very How helpful fun. because I there was some stuff that I'm like, this is a neat color and this is mm -hmm. a, something that I think will work. And then I used a little filter and it went, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't want to look dead. And that makes me I look dead. I, I prefer to look alive. Thank you. <laughs> I, I need to look a certain way, but dead is not one of them. Right. Mm. I just looked over at Caleb Marin. I don't know what you're responding to, but not undead does half dead count. This is also not a makeup look that I wanted. I did not want to look at the veins. Dead. And if you don't see it's a comment on top from Celine Selena. And if you don't see any veins, you're undead. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Mm. See, you yeah. learn way more than just mini painting here. I mean, honest to God, today I learned and I wish two weeks ago, two months ago, two years ago, I knew the whole, just look at your veins and that'll tell you what your, uh, yeah. your skin tone, uh, if you're warm, if you're cold, if you're something in the, in the mm -hmm. middle, because I can yep. listen to stuff and pick out stuff aud uh, auditorially very clearly. You tell me something, I will remember it forever. If I got to look at it, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's fair. And I am, I watch as Luke does color theory stuff and very specific things. And I'm just blown away that about any of it. It's, it's, it's all amazing. Just like this, just like this. Yes. Meme. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this. So let's see. We have a couple minutes left. Five minutes. We Yes. So do you want to um, brave the eye? Let's do it. Uh -huh. Let's brave the eye. I've got my toothpicks. I'm ready. Yep. You can use your toothpicks or I finally found my dot tools I kept talking about. You can get these yeah. things, which are dot tools, which you'll see manicures use. So you find this at your local drugstore in beauty aisles with nail polish. Hmm. So these are fantastic. They come in a whole different scale of sizes. Um, but I like using this for my eye eyes. 
because it gives you a stable point. It also cleans beautifully so you can reuse it. Um, and because I paint sense. so many minis, for me, this is great. Otherwise, I'm going through a lot of toothpicks. <laughs> Whereas a I lot, bought 250 rounds and mm -hmm. this will just be what I use for a while. Right? Okay, what? So, so we want to go to white and we're going to dot the eyes with white first because we want to get that cleaned up a little bit because right now it's just so black. Yeah. So I'm just going to put a little bit of white onto my palette. And then I'm taking the smaller end of my dotting tool. And it literally yeah, just has are... a little bead of white on it. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. And then I can just, in a controlled state, go in and dot. And see, it does teensy weensy little dots. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but I do rinse between dotting because I find I have better control rather than layer dips of paint. Just start with a fresh dip each time. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it can create um, almost a flared out effect as opposed to a dot because the paint starts building up on itself. So just FYI there. I'm very happy with one side. I'm not See? as happy with the other. It's a fantastic cheat. So as long as you're comfortable going into the beauty aisle and looking for this, I call them my daughters, which people think I mean like my little girls. No. D-A-U-G-H <laughs> instead yeah. of D-O-T-T. D-O-T-T-E-R. Uh, D-O-T-T-E-R, daughter. They really do come in handy. And yeah, everybody just look at that side of Dahani. That's the yeah. eye I'm very proud of. Not not this side. There that we go. Side. But it gives you some fantastic control. Yeah. Wow. Which I love. Um, so we'll do that. And then we're going to go to gold yellow. And put that gold. same thing where we just gold put yellow. the whites. Don't call me daughter. Thank you, Dr. B. <laughs> It's still this is dipping dots. Oh, I'm that person. I do love dipping dots. Why can't I get this open? Oh no. Same. Oh my god. Are we <laughs> Tanya had this issue with, with the um Okay, I'm gonna say uh -oh. instead of Lauren and I will work on opening up the yellow between now and then. I'm gonna quickly yeah. get up and show you the other sizes of these dot things. Yeah, this is we'll we'll what do that too. With because yeah. these definitely are valuable too. So Lauren and I will work on opening up the yellow tomorrow, not tomorrow, at some point before our next stream next Friday. And we'll pick up with finishing off the eyes and then going into the clothing. Um, but yeah, let's just set that aside because I'm convinced that I, I can get this open, but not without a disaster. So I'm same there. Same. Um, what wow. we may have to do is if you have, if you have a paint cap that will not open for you, a trick is Lauren is fill up a cup with really hot water dip the cap in and then pull it out and twist. Try not to get the bottle itself because what the heat will do is make the cap expand. So you mm. should be able to twist it off. Um, yeah, I've done that before with um, food container bottles. Mm -hmm. You can do the, a similar thing. Uh, yeah, good to so, know it works on paint bottles. Oh, there's your daughters. These are my Do daughters. So you can see they're double-sided. So you get a variety of size and even shape. Some of them come more to a point and some of them are more rounded spherically. So like you can see how this one's more pointed. Yeah. So this is this is the one I like to use for dotting my eyes. And this is and great for doing little dot works. Like if you want to do polka dots on fabric. So this one with a slight point is what I use for eye work. This is what I'll use if I want to create little speckles. Um, then we have other ones. And I'm sure- they get pretty big. You can go, you could probably find these for fairly inexpensive. Oh, this and it's a very specific tool, but yeah. Yeah, $3.99 for all of these. It really works. Next so, time I am at the drugstore, I will take a look. Keep an eye out for those. All right, so I'm going to put that to the side. So really, that means next week we're going to work on nope, the nope, clothing, nope. finish up the eyes, and then start working on the clothing and the higher detail work of... You know, those lovely little swirls and gold details. But we are getting that much closer to our Spelljammer Dahani Mini, I mean, which she, I am so yeah. She She already looks a lot like Dahani. It's now just, mm -hmm. it's kind of the details that are going to be the difference between her regular yep. outfit and her Spelljammer outfit. Absolutely. So that is the plan for next week. And then we have 
I'm going to do it again. I'm going to call this stream by the two names pushed together. What's coming up next? <laughs> uh, coming up in 10 minutes is, um, new, or not that one, uh, Formation Save. So from 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific, you can hang out with Sean and Mars, and they're going to be helping you with your formations and showing you there really you cool go. things that you can do. So and stick around in 10 yes. minutes from now and do formation oh, fun on oh. a Friday. I forgot. We have that mini that we're going to talk about before going away. And if you want to know what we're going to do in a couple weeks, um, we're going to be working on what WizKids has just sent to us. We're going to be working on we're gonna be the so cute. Giant Space Hamster Limited Edition Paint Kit. Now this should be coming out soon, if not already. This is something you'll most likely need to go to a local game store to see if they have it available and in store. It is up on dndmini.com. However, it looks like it is sold out right now. But I want to make Everyone sure you know this is exists. Like, Boo! <laughs> this is the actual giant space hamster. You're you're not wrong, chat. But this is the giant version of what Boo is, which is the mini version of the giant version, which is what this is. So we're going to be doing this one, and we're going to be making it look like the lovely artwork that you can see in the official uh, book oh and everything God. like that. Um, if for some reason you miss the stream or you get this later on. Just remember, WizKids does have a QR code that'll give you a tutorial on how to paint this as well. But we do make sure these go up onto our YouTube channel later so you can still follow along with us, yep. even if you get this later on. So that's that's going to be in a couple weeks. We'll start with that one. I think that's it. So that's, now. That's everything, yeah. All right. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Sing the songs that pop into your head, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.